to just go down here and you switch this and now here's the GE4 1650. Hello folks, welcome to the NetCruiser Tech. Today I want to talk to you about this, an Asus laptop. All right, so here we have the box of a laptop. This is actually an Asus VivoBook Pro X571G. Here is the laptop. Now it is quite an interesting model. Boxing Day is a bit of a shopping holiday in Canada, although Black Friday has now eclipsed it. We still have some sales on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. And the Canada Computer is buying some computer components and uh, this was, the main sale at the top of their flyer and I was quite surprised to see not many people buying it. Uh, no one was lined up for it. There was still 10 in stock when I went there. And this is a very interesting laptop because it's basically a gaming laptop in disguise. This has a Core i5-8300H and a full discrete graphics card GTX 1650 inside. It is a 15.6 inch laptop, 1080p screen, and I'll show you some of the other specs on the advertising for it because there's a couple things that they had mentioned that I thought it would come with that it did not. For having a 45 watt CPU and a full GTX 1650 discrete four gigabyte graphics card in this, it is a very thin laptop. I must say I was quite surprised and I do like the form factor quite a bit. You got all your standard ports that you would need, um, an SD card, two USB 3.0, another USB 3.0, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C, HDMI out, Ethernet, and power in. It also has Windows Hello, but Windows Hello is by the fingerprint reader, not the camera. Now since this has a discrete graphics card in it, it's going to produce a lot of heat. Also because it has a 45 watt CPU. This is not an Ultrabook. This is a desktop replacement type components. Four core, eight thread, eighth generation i5-8300H along with a GTX 1650, which I will say this is an odd combination as we've got an eighth gen CPU with a 2019 GPU. I actually think that that i5 decision is better than going for the i7 because this chassis is so small, it needs to be able to breathe. And in my opinion, and then the limited testing that I've done with it, it is a very quiet laptop. That is one of the great things about it is how quiet it is. Check out all the cooling. The whole bottom is vented. This is the air intake. So all of the air comes in through the bottom and then it gets vented out in what I think is the best spot for computer venting right here where it's not blowing down at you as the user, it's venting heat up top. So it blows directly at the bottom of the bezel. So all the heat blows out directly at the back here at the, and it blasts at the screen bezel and then vents up through atmosphere. I do like it. Now this has dual fans inside, one side for GPU, one side for CPU or vice versa. I haven't opened it to actually see. But overall the fit and finish and design of this is okay. But it was certainly some compromises to meet the budget. The finish is a kind of in between gray and blue, this color scheme. It's hard for it to, it's hard to come out, but it does pick up fingerprints as you can see. Here we have matte black along all the screen bezel. And here we've got this kind of a blackish, silverish, bluish color. As well as on the back of the display, it's all that same type of a finish that does show up fingerprints. Unfortunately, you cannot open it one-handed, not easily. And one of the other design things is the way that they've designed this hinge system to raise the deck. But since all the air intake is on the bottom of the laptop, they needed a way to raise it. So they're doing that via the screen hinge which I do not agree with. So they've got it so that the screen itself is propping up the whole laptop. From a reliability standpoint, this does not seem like a great idea. It also is not very comfortable. It also means that you cannot lean the screen back any more than this. So design wise, that's how much articulation you can get out of the screen. That's it. Also, when you do have it open and on your lap, it's a little bit uncomfortable this is what they designed as the feet. These two little sharp, when you have the laptop open and actually using it, it sits on these little plastic hard nubs. And I've already scratched my own leg using it. And I've also scratched the leather on my couch using it. Just opening it and setting it down and then moving it just a little bit, scrape the leather. So be careful about that if you do get one of these. The other thing about the design is the keyboard, which 
surprisingly has very little flex to the keyboard deck. So that feels okay. This one is a bilingual keyboard because I live in Canada, but if you buy one of these in the USA, you would get a traditional, a better style of a keyboard. Power on the computer using the power button up at the top here. For being designed as a gaming laptop, I would have preferred them put in the few extra bucks to make it a backlit keyboard, as I did find myself using this at night quite a bit and wanting to actually have the keyboard lighted. The screen is a 1080p IPS display with surprisingly good viewing angles and it has a matte coating on it. Color reproduction and contrast is better than most of the laptops that were surrounding it when I did see this in the store having the laptops around it. This one had a noticeably better screen but once you get it home and you're comparing it to some maybe some higher end displays like an iMac or a Microsoft Surface it doesn't have the saturation of those other higher end panels. It actually has really nice contrast levels which I do like and I do currently have the saturation boosted by 15% to give it a little bit more color because it's a little muted at the box. Done a little bit of limited tuning with this uh, just to see if I wanted to keep it. Overall, I'm not going to keep this laptop just because of some of the design annoyances that I have found, such as the way that the hinge works, as well as the screen itself. I prefer having a touch screen. This is not a touch screen based laptop. I haven't seen any gaming style laptops with a discrete GPU and a touch screen paired in this price point, being that this is an $800 Canadian laptop on sale. This is the power brick that you get with it, a 150 watt power brick. It's actually pretty small for being a 150 watt. Here's all the stats on it. It's a typical barrel style connector, just in the side over here. So you can rotate it to have your cable going to the front or the back. And yes, you cannot charge over USB-C. This laptop has a 41 watt hour battery inside and I'll show you some of the hardware info in a second. So here's the stats on it according to Cinebench R20, 8300H, 4 core, 8 threads at 2.31 gigahertz base. It also boosts up to around 4 gigahertz boost. I closed this one because I didn't want to run R20, I wanted to run R15. Now we're in Cinebench R15. I'm going to do quickly just a CPU run here. I'm going to show you how quiet it is. This is currently running on battery. The fans haven't even kicked on yet, and it's already halfway through the rendering run. I am quite impressed with that. If you're looking for a powerful, quiet machine, this one's really good, actually. I really like the idea of it, but it had a couple of things that were advertised that it does not have. So let me, while it's run, doing this rendering run, let me just quickly go through some of the things that I thought it had that it doesn't have. Okay, here's the ad. Regular $9.99 on for $7.99. Note here, it's got Windows Hello. So it's a i5, 8300H, GTX 1650, 8GB DDR4, 512GB SSD, which is a NVMe SSD, an Intel P660 unit. And here's the ultra-fast display. This VivoBook K571 features an IPS level panel with up to a 120Hz refresh rate. So mm, that's where they get you, up to. So this model, this particular model does not have the 120 hertz refresh rate, which is unfortunate. You've got a powerful enough GPU in here with a GTX 1650 that you would be able to push up to 120 frames a second in some games with settings turned down, but you can't see it because they've put in a 60 hertz display in this particular model. Really what I'm getting at here is that if you could find a different variant of this laptop with maybe the 9th gen CPU, the 120 hertz display, a backlit keyboard, then if you could find one for a little bit more than this one, I would say go for it because I really like some of the design choices that are in here, particularly the cooling. I do love that the cooling is the whole intake on the bottom and then vents it out through these really cool looking vents on the top. So when you're using it, it's very comfortable for heat level. It's not bothering you for heat at all. What it is bothering me with is just the way it's designed where it gouges into your skin when you're sitting it on your lap. Here's my R15 run, which got a 357 Cinebench. That's terrible. The last one I got on plugged in was 809. So on battery, because I have my battery stats set for more battery. Yes, I have battery set for better battery. This is the other thing, look, it's showing me only a three hour window of battery at 95% and it's currently limited its power. So if you wanna run it for a long period of time, you have to plug it in. If you wanna get the most power out of it, you gotta run it plugged in. I don't know why they took the GPU test out of uh, Cinebench R20, because I do find this quite useful for setting benchmarks. So we got a 28 
0.25 frames per second. That's also terrible on battery. Uh, this is the first time I've been running these tests on battery. When you plug in, you get significantly better performance. All right, now I am plugged in and my power performance is now at better performance, not max, because at max it just leaves you at full turbo boost all the time. Now let's run the graphics test plugged in. Okay, and plugged in, we should get a significantly higher result. That's better. 85.45 frames per second. If I run a Cinebench rendering test plugged in, I would get around 800 points. That's with R15. Let me show you what I got with R20. So with R20, my best score plugged in was a 1837, if you're comparing uh, R20 scores, which is a pretty powerful score for the price of this laptop. If you're looking for something that could crunch through some good rendering and, and have some pretty good games ability, this is a, this is a decent choice. Let me show you older game Grid 2 that I like because it has a pretty decent benchmark run and it uh, I did sh test this as a benchmark with the Radeon R5 3400G with integrated graphics so and with that one at 1080p with everything maxed out we got around 30 to 40 frames a second let me show you what this laptop can do okay let's go into options and extras options graphics and we currently are on quality advanced i believe oh before we had a preset mode let me just check what we're on here so we're at 1920 by 1080 with eight times multi-sampling uh anti-aliasing refresh rate was set for v-sync i'm going to turn v-sync off okay uh quality is currently set for everything's pretty much on high or ultra and let's see what we can do here we're going to run a benchmark run But it's not that bad if you're actually listening to your game audio. Your game audio easily overpowers the fan noise. It also is about twice as fast as an integrated Vega 11. Screen quality is pretty good as I do like the contrast and black levels in this panel. It is a panel by LG. Okay, the benchmark run has just completed and we got a average frames a second of 85, minimum 56 and maximum 115. And that's with everything maxed at 1080p. So this discrete GPU is pretty good. Okay, let me exit out of the game here and I will show you some of the hardware info if you're looking to find out what is actually inside of a computer that you bought, the best app by far is Hardware Info, HW Info 64. Here's the CPU and the built-in GPU. Now you do have to change if you want to see GPU 2, you do have to just go down here and you switch this and now here's the GE4 1650. If you want to know about the RAM situation, we have a 8 gigabyte stick single channel so it's only using one of the two banks so i would expect that if i did tear this apart there would be one free ram slot in here i would certainly hope so although i'm not going to open up to confirm it here's all the ram timings showing that there's two channels that are supported but only one is active the monitor information being that i was hoping that it was the 120 hertz panel it is not this one is an lg lg d0563 which here's all the panel stats of it it's 2018 panel eight bits per color the GTX 1650 has 4GB GDDR5 RAM, well as for a storage drive, you don't have any serial ATA, but there should be spots in here to add one. But we do have an Intel SSD NVMe 660p. And if you're curious about all the other things, you do have a USB 3.1 Gen 1, there's no USB 3.1 Gen 2. The audio is Intel Canon Lake audio system. Networking is Intel Wireless AC 19560 with a Realtek Semiconductor uh, 811 PCIe. The battery stats information. So it's an Asus battery, 42,000 milliwatt hours. So 40, it looks like it's a 42 watt hour battery. 1.4% wear level. Not huge, enough for about three to six hours of on battery usage when you're not doing anything too intensive. But overall, this computer does perform much better when it is plugged in. 
And then central processor, here you get to see your 4-core 8-thread i5-8300H. I think for a lot of people, this is a really good machine. But for me, because I have so many computers and I just, I guess I'm a little bit spoiled in what I expected of computers nowadays. I was hoping for a slightly better display, the Windows Hello, a backlit keyboard, and a little bit more of a comfortable foot on the back of the display as it already has gouged into me a few times. If you are looking to get one of these, I believe they're on sale until January 2nd. Uh, might be worth picking up if you're in Canada, if you're looking for a decent machine. I know a couple people were looking for uh, replacement laptops this year. I've been recommending that they get this one. I really do think that it is a good laptop. It's just maybe not one that I need, personally. I do quite like it. The power that you get for the size that it is, I think it's a winner. Just a couple things could have made it a little bit better, but for the majority of people, this is going to be better than 90% of the laptops that you would get in that same kind of a price point. For $800 Canadian, you don't really get anything that has a GTX 1650 in it for that kind of a price point. So if you're looking to do any kind of a gaming or any kind of graphic intensive programming, this is probably your best bet right now. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.